Brain tumors in dogs, they're more common than you think. This is the most commonly diagnosed brain tumor, how you can naturally treat this at home. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. I find it really hard to imagine my dog ever having a brain tumor. But brain tumors, they are the most common cause of our dogs at seizure over the age of seven. The most common brain tumor, it's called a meningioma. Fortunately, these are benign brain tumors, meaning that they grow locally, but they're not going to spread elsewhere. A meningioma meaning it's growing from the outer layer encasing the brain, the spinal cord. It's called a meninge. So you've got a seizuring dog, he's over the age of seven. Your veterinarian is going to start out with some diagnostic blood work, try to rule out some of the things that we'd more typically think of, i.e. epilepsy. But if they're not able to get a confirmatory diagnosis, then you'd be looking at more diagnostic imaging, CT scan, MRIs, and that's how you're going to get a confirmatory diagnosis of a brain tumor. I recall in veterinary practice, you know, diagnosing some dogs with brain tumors. At the time, I wasn't really open to treatment. I saw a brain tumor as a huge inoperable tumor and something that we're going to have very luck with treatment. Turns out that's not actually the case. You know, this is a benign growth. Surgery is a legitimate option. Unfortunately for many of the dogs, even though it's a benign tumor, meningioma, it can be difficult to get full exact margins and fully resect this tumor. You know, other veterinary options include radiation therapy, a chemotherapy. Say you've got an older dog, he or she starts to seizure, your veterinarian suspects he's got a meningioma, a brain tumor. Like, maybe you don't want to go through all those conventional treatments and you're kind of looking at something alternative, holistic, is there something else that you can try that potentially help your dog? Number one, we want to try and control the seizures, decrease the amount of sugar that's going to the brain, MCT oil. We're going to alter your dog's diet. We're going to increase the amount of the fat in the diet. We're going to decrease the amount of carbohydrates. What we're doing is putting your dog on a keto diet, meaning we're going to eliminate all those carbohydrates. We're making fat the preferred energy source that gets converted to ketones and that what supplies energy for the brain. We can get a couple of big benefits by doing that. Number one, we're decreasing glucose supply to the brain, also glucose supply to the cancer. In many cases, we're seeing a decrease in cancer growth because of that. Secondarily, we're gonna decrease the chance of your dog seizuring. When we have ketones as a preferred energy source for the brain, we see a marked decrease in seizure activity. I've done a few different videos on the keto diet. I'm gonna put links to those videos in the description box. But in summary, you know, you're eliminating the carbs from your dog's diet. We're going to be feeding your dog 50% animal protein, 50% some type of veggies, no more carbohydrates. Then we're going to add in additional fat. And the fat we're looking at is this, it's MCT oil. It's a type of fat that's been isolated from coconut oil. A typical dog dose is one teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight daily. With something like that, I always suggest you start out with half a dose. You want to start a little bit slowly, make sure your dog doesn't get diarrhea. Start, start up with half that dose initially, then up it. Mm. A lot of people are on this. You've heard of like, actually it's pretty fatty. You've heard of bullet coffee, it gives people this additional energy. We get all jazzed about things like weight loss. So I mean, it, it is really good stuff. Good for you, good for your brain. And really, really beneficial if you've got a dog that has a meningioma. Number two, something that's going to help the seizures, something that's going to help decrease cancer cell growth, cannabidiol, CBD. CBD, cannabidiol, it's the non-psychoactive portion from the cannabis plant. I've talked about it extensively. Really important for our dogs that have any type of seizures. The CBD is also shown to be very beneficial for many of the cancers. And there's research showing it to be beneficial for brain tumors. Pretty standard dog dose, three milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight twice daily when we're dealing with an animal that has seizure activity. If you had a 10 pound dog, you'd be giving one drop twice a day of my supplement, Ultimate CBD. That's three milligrams twice a day. You can easily up that to five times a dose. Number three, this is a medicinal mushroom that has got some great research on to be beneficial for brain tumors. Reishi. This mushroom, reishi, I don't know exactly if you pronounce it correctly that way or not, but it's a traditional Chinese medicinal mushroom. I'm going to put a link to this one study showed red reishi to be especially beneficial for this really serious type of brain cancer that people get called glioblastoma. You know, it's a malignant cancer 
that's really not responsive to surgery, chemotherapy, radiation. What, what was one of the few things to be beneficial in that case? This guy, Reishi. As far as a typical dose, I'd be dosing a dog at about 400 milligrams for 30 pounds of body weight daily. I mean, these are 400 milligram capsules. So if Tula were to have a brain tumor, I'd be inclined to be giving her one capsule once a day. And I'd do that for a full 60 days to assess whether it's being beneficial or not. Number four, a vitamin that has been extensively studied in people with brain tumors shown to be very beneficial, vitamin D. Vitamin D or the active form of vitamin D called calcitriol. It's essential for normal calcium metabolism in terms of healthy bones, think of those but it also has an array of other different functions. There's vitamin D receptors all over the body. In people, sunlight hits the skin, UVB rays. It converts a type of cholesterol in the skin to a precursor of vitamin D. So D3 makes its way to the liver, makes its way to the kidneys. Ultimately comes the active form of vitamin D or calcitriol. Our dogs, they also need adequate vitamin D but it needs to be come from their diet. This one review study, they looked an array of all the different alternative treatments because many people, when they've got you know, more serious type of brain cancer, like this glioblastoma, this malignant cancer, which doesn't really respond well to anything conventionally, like we're trying stuff alternatively. And one of the few things they found that a direct correlation showing to be really beneficial was this guy, the vitamin D. If I were to have a dog that had a brain tumor, I would be using vitamin D, but I'd be using at a lowish safe dose at about 100 IUs per 10 pounds of body weight daily. If you're gonna be using vitamin D, you need to be using it at the appropriate dose. So as I said, I'd be using the dose at about 100 IUs, those are international units per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Tula weighs 20 pounds, should be getting 200 IUs a day. Knowing all that stuff about vitamin D, I'm gonna be giving myself a drop one for me, it tastes pretty good. There's your bit of vitamin D, one for you. Last but not least, medication to treat these guys, parasites. Number one, there's one old animal dewormer called niclosamide. Niclosamide is used to treat things such as these guys, tapeworms. One study found this old dewormer, niclosamide, to be specifically beneficial for glioblastoma. Then the dewormer I was more excited about that I would be considering if I were to have a dog that had a brain tumor. It's this very popular older animal dewormer, Ibermac or Ivermectin. There's a bunch of studies going now using Ivermectin for an array of the different cancers, both in people and in our animals. One of the studies, they found a clear benefit using Ivermectin for many of the brain tumors. Ivermectin, I mean, that's the active ingredient. It's in heart guard, for instance. So it's been used by millions and millions of animals. At higher doses, some animals can react to it. Uh, animals, specifically the collies, the collie crosses. But it can be any animal that has a deficiency of a type of gene that is needed to metabolize the drug. But let's just say you've got a dog that's got a brain tumor. You know, maybe surgery is not an option. Um, radiation, chemotherapy, it's not an option. So you start going down the line, like definitely try some of the alternative options I talked about. If you were kind of sort of the last resort, like what else can you consider doing? I would have you consider, and I personally would be considering this, the ivermectin. If your dog is a collie, a collie cross, by all means, you, you can go ahead and get that genetic testing done to ensure that they don't have a deficiency of the gene. And it's safe for you to be giving ivermectin. For some of the studies I've read using similar doses to the deworming doses, or say the anti-lice or anti-sarcoptic mange dose. Here it's the injectable ivermectin, it's 10 milligrams per mil. We're looking at a standard dog dose of one milligram per 10 pounds of body weight daily. So that's 0.1 of a cc once a day. Your dog's been diagnosed with a brain tumor. Well, definitely there's alternative options. And just to let you know that that exists. I mean, the big principle veterinary medicine wise, number one, you know, we're giving something to decrease inflammation. So typically your vet might prescribe prednisone you can be using CBD oil. Number two, they're often giving something then to decrease seizure activity, you know, such as phenobarbital, potassium bromide. You can be looking at something else, alternatives, you know, such as the CBD, such as the MCT oil. And then number three, you're giving something holistically, you know, i.e. Uh, the medicinal mushroom reishi, don't you help decrease you know, the size, the growth of that cancer in the first place. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets on Brain Tumors and Dogs. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and when you click the link directly in the box below, 
I can send you a copy of my free book.